Hey there, spiritual seekers. Today, let's dive into the spiritual battle laid out in Genesis. Understanding this is key to your survival. You may not realize what you're dealing with. The scriptures speak of three seeds and their origins. In Genesis 3.15, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Here, two seeds are mentioned, the woman's seed and the serpent's seed. But there's a third seed you should know about, the traditional seed of man. The woman's seed represents the lineage of Christ, a beacon of hope and salvation. This seed carries the promise of redemption. Next, we have the serpent's seed. This symbolizes the forces of deception and opposition to divine order. It's the darkness trying to lead us astray. Understanding its influence is crucial in resisting its temptations. Finally, the traditional seed of man. This is humanity's lineage filled with potential for both good and evil. Our choices determine which path we follow. In this spiritual battle, recognizing these seeds helps us navigate our journey. It's about seeing beyond the physical world and understanding the spiritual forces at play. So remember, understanding the spiritual world is key to your survival. Know the seeds, know their origins, and be vigilant in your spiritual journey. Stay tuned for more insights. Until next time, keep seeking and stay enlightened. End. Yes, Neo. Yes. Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yeshayahu, where we address the problems of a modern world. And today's topic, the three seeds in scripture, unlocking the mystery. Unlocking the spiritual world, the three seeds of Genesis. Topic one, the unseen world, seeds of hope, seeds of conflict, more than meets the eye. From flood to future, our spiritual reality and the grand finale. Welcome to our channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Most of all, Enjoy the show. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So that is, you know, you read that and you, maybe it goes over your head, maybe it doesn't. But essentially, that is discussing the future of humanity and the grand scheme, the plan. I'm talking about the serpent seed, and a lot of people argue, oh, that's, that's, that's a metaphor. That's not a real thing. Uh, I don't know about that. It talks about it, and uh, the Messiah even alludes to it. You know, and if you read the New Testament, there's a lot of allusion to it. So in this video, we're going to tackle some of it, um, but as you read it, it, it looks like they're talking about two seeds. Well, in actuality, it's three seeds. There's a standard seed of Adam, the man, which is, you know, almost 100% of the times the case. In fact, only one circumstance that I could think of where it was not the case. You know, there was one woman who had essentially, if you will, her seed within herself, you know. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, disjointed beliefs. Um, there's a lot of uh, Israelites that don't like, they think the idea of the virgin birth is uh, pagan. Um, they think it's, uh, you know, they'll tell you that Joseph was the father of uh, Hamashiach, the Messiah. I mean, physically. Um, but it doesn't 
it's disjointed. It doesn't match the earlier scriptures. The earlier scripture says that essentially the Messiah comes from the woman's seed. The fact that they actually bring that out, because if you think about it, uh, there's no such thing, right? But it actually says that, which tells you something. And you have to understand, Ashatan, the Satans, they also took note of that. Well, the human species, they breed because the man has the seed, right? And, and the man sows the seed, and there's a, you know, a child born, right? But in this specific case, and the only case in which something like this is mentioned is in the case of the seed of the woman, as if to say there will be this one woman that will have seed. And it, it's, it's, it makes sense when you understand that this virgin birth thing is a real thing and it's not pagan and it's backed up by scripture. I mean, pretty much everywhere. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm not trying to start, uh, you know, any discontent or go back and forth with anyone, but um, that's, that's what I see, you know, and I, and I don't think uh, my mind's going to, I can't say my mind can't be changed, but it, everything fits with this, right? So Miriam, Mary, she was uh, impregnated by the power of the Holy Spirit, which just means that her seed was in her and the Holy Spirit just unlocked it. So genetically, um, it replicated within her. It was allowed, something was unlocked and she was allowed to replicate a child inside of her that no man had anything to do with. So that's going back to that prophecy, right? Um, so the, the, the Satans also recognized that. They said there's something about this, the seed of the woman that we have to thwart this thing. And, you know, I'm not going to give everything away right now, but basically... Their plan was to create their own seed, impregnate women. In other words, come down, shapeshift into the form of a man or men. And some people say they shapeshifted into the form of these women's husbands, you know, which made it easier to impregnate these women. Now, I don't know all that. that I don't see any scriptures that backs that up. It does say, however, that the watchers did come down and impregnate human women and their offspring or Nephilim, or what King James calls giants. And so there were giants, I call them kaiju, <laughs> uh, and they were true giants. They were, you know, King Kong-like, Godzilla-like, you know what I'm saying? In other, t in other words, they were truly giant, right? And their goal was, number one, they were jealous of man because man could create a family, which is what the Most High is creating. That's why men are created in the image of the Most High, not, not what we call, not angels. They are not. They were not designed to procreate, and so they committed abomination and spirit going into flesh, right? So, and their offspring um, was not complete. In other words, you know, there's three components to the human being. There's, I guess they say it like this, uh, body, soul, and spirit, something on that order. Well, you can kind of look at the Nephilim as only having two components. So basically, their spirits are not accepted by the Most High. They don't fit. So there's no place for them. So when they were destroyed in the flood, there was no place for their spirits to go. And they were cognizant spirits, not like what I call human spirits, which are more like, uh, you know, they're, they are spirit, but they're kind of what I call dumb spirit, meaning until they are uh, injected with the Holy Spirit and, and, and life is injected into them, it's kind of like a woman's ovum. It's a cell that has no meaning, meaningful life until it is, it's, it's uh, you know, until a gamete comes in and fertilizes it, right? And then it begets a new, more, more intricate life form, a, a superior life form. 
So that's like the Holy Spirit coming into our spirit and begetting a new life form in us, right? A new creature, a new creation, right? And what is that creation if the Holy Spirit is is essentially fa- the Father? <laughs> you know, if I'm saying it saying it right, but um, but the angels are looking at this whole situation. They know something's up. They know the Most High has a plan, and they're trying to thwart it. So they're gonna try to head it off and create their own children, their own offspring, and they and they're going to try to uh, displace human beings as the dominant species on the planet. In fact, they're trying to wipe human beings out. And their plan was was working. And the Most High had to do something drastic. And so he caused a flood, right? And so I'm not going to belabor this point, but understand the plan of the Satans is to replace man. And his seed is still alive and well. Now, if you notice, by the time you get to Goliath and his brothers, what what we call the Rephaim, they are descended by genetics, uh, predisposed, and I guess you would say high concentration of Nephilim blood. So they're still giants, but they're not giants on the kaiju level. They're giants, meaning they're just much bigger than human men, but they're not Godzilla size, if, if you know, if you. Follow what I'm saying. So all these videos I've seen about, oh, the Nephilim survived the floods, and here's how. And da, 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 da. No, if Nephilim, full, full blown Nephilim, had survived the flood, then Godzilla movies would be real. You follow what I'm saying? You picking up what I'm putting down? Or do you follow my point? No, we have now at the time of King David. I'll say it that way. Um, a scaled down version called Rephaim, yes. Genetically, very close to the Nephilim, but the bloodline is diluted so much because they essentially intermingle with human beings. And so they've scaled down. And then you're going to find out in the last days, they have so intermingled with human beings that you can't even distinguish them from human beings except in what they do. You will know them by their fruits. And so I'm not going to give everything away, but understand, they live. I did a video on that. They live. You saw the movie? They live. They are among us, and they look just like us. You will know them by their fruits. Look at what the Nephilim did. They destroyed everything around them. They ate up all the natural resources. They devoured men. They were displacing men. They were spreading their seed. When the Messiah said, the last days shall be just like the days of Noah, he specifically mentions they were marrying and given in marriage. Well, that, that doesn't sound like a bad thing, marrying and giving in marriage, but who was getting married? And who was given in marriage? You see, the Nephilim were trying to displace human beings on this earth. That's one of the reasons the, the watchers create or, you know, impregnated human women to displace mankind. Fast forward to today, that plan has not changed and they are displacing human beings and they're doing it by hook or crook. And I'm not going to get into it now. I'll let you just watch the rest of the video, but understand what you are dealing with. You are dealing with the same things Noah dealt with. And I got a video for you. Check it out. Our world is full of wonders. We see the beauty of nature, the vastness of space. But there's another world, unseen. The spiritual world is just as real. It affects us every day. To truly survive, to thrive, we must understand this unseen world. We can't touch the spiritual realm but we feel it. Love, hate, fear, hope. These emotions come from somewhere. They whisper of a deeper reality. Ignoring this reality leaves us vulnerable. We're like ships sailing without charts. Think of it like this. Imagine a fish in a vast ocean. The fish only sees the water around it. It doesn't see the fisherman on the boat above. 
but the fisherman sees the fish. The fisherman's actions directly impact the fish's life. We are like that fish. We often only see our physical world, but there's a spiritual realm above influencing us. Understanding this spiritual reality is key to navigating life's challenges. It's about seeing the whole picture. Let's go back to the beginning. The book of Genesis, it tells a story. A story of creation, of humanity's fall, and a promise of redemption. This promise is hidden in a prophecy. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, it speaks of three seeds. The first seed is the woman's seed. This seed represents hope, a promise of a coming savior. Someone to crush the head of the serpent, to defeat evil. This savior is Yahusha. The second seed is the serpent seed. This represents evil, the forces that oppose God and humanity. The serpent seed is cunning, deceptive. It wants to destroy everything good. Then there's the seed of man. This represents humanity caught in the middle of this cosmic battle. We have a choice to make. Will we follow the woman's seed, choosing faith and goodness? Or will we succumb to the serpent's seed, embracing darkness? The serpent's seed, it's not so straightforward. It exists on two levels. There's the visible wicked people, those who not only choose evil, but are innately evil, descendants of Nephilim by blood, thought, and mind. But there's also the invisible, a darker side, demons, disembodied Nephilim. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 4 speaks of sons of God taking wives from the daughters of men. This speaks of fallen angels, spiritual beings who rebelled against God. They corrupted humanity, twisting creation. This union, it produced giants, beings of immense size and strength. But the influence of these fallen angels, they went beyond physical forms. They introduced something sinister into humanity, a corruption of the spirit, a warping of our very nature. This is the invisible aspect of the serpent seed. It's insidious working from within. Section 4. The Enduring Legacy From Flood to Future The flood came, wiping out much of humanity. But the serpent's seed, it survived. How? Through DNA passed down through one or more of the survivors on the ark. Not named Noah, who was perfect in his DNA or generations. The genetic corruption remained a constant threat, but it's more than just genes. The disembodied spirits of those fallen angels, they still linger. They roam the earth, seeking to deceive and destroy. They whisper lies, tempting us towards darkness. This is the battle we face. We wrestle not just with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers, with spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a battle for our minds, our hearts, our very souls. Section 5. Our Spiritual Reality We cannot afford to be ignorant. The spiritual world is real, and it's at war. The serpent seed is active, seeking to drag us down. But there's hope. The woman seed, Yahusha, offers us victory. Through him we can resist the darkness. We can choose faith, love, and goodness. We can break free from the serpent's grip. Our journey through life is not just physical. It's a spiritual odyssey. By acknowledging this truth, by understanding the forces at play, we equip ourselves to navigate this journey. We can stand firm against the darkness and embrace the light. The choice is ours. Understanding the spiritual world is key to your survival. You do not know what you are dealing with. The scriptures talk about the three seeds and their origins. 
And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. So in the preceding passage, two seeds are mentioned, the woman's seed and the serpent's seed. But the third seed is kind of the standard seed, which is, or the traditional seed, which is the seed of man, the seed of Adam. So this seed of the woman is different. It's a difference maker. And like, like I said before, Ashatan took note of it and he had to move fast or they had to move fast to disrupt it. So they created their own seed to displace the seed and hopefully, kind of like King Herod did, if you think about it, what did King Herod do? He sent out his armies to wipe out all the seed of, of the Israelites um, from two years and down, right? Why? Because he feared this Messiah, this King of the Jews. Well, the same thing. So Herod was operating uh, like his father's, because Herod was obviously a seed of the serpent. Just look at what that family did throughout the whole scripture. And keep in mind, he was an Idumean. And what is an Idumean? That's basically Greek for Edomite, Edom. And who are the Edomites? The descendants of Esau, the brother of Jacob, Israel. So keep all that in mind. The serpent seed is both visible and invisible. Um, let's start with the invisible. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. So uh, the scriptures start, you know, and I, I know in the beginning, um, before all this truth came out, this, this greater understanding of what, what was being discussed there, most people were like, what the heck are they talking about? It can't mean that. And so the churches, yeah, they kind of pushed that issue that it doesn't mean what you think it means. You're not reading what you think you're reading. <laughs> it's not saying what it says. You know? <laughs> and so, you know, back in the day before internet and before, you know, Google and all, and you could actually research stuff. You know, most people are not going to get out their house, go into a library and fumble through stacks and stacks of books and master the Dewey, what is it called? The Dewey Decimal System, whatever it is. The, how we used to have to go to libraries. And if I mentioned that today, the kids would look at me like, what? Because they know they can go online and just look stuff up, right? The children those women bore for the angels became the serpent seed. There were giants in the earth in, in those days. And also after that, uh -huh, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4. So that's pretty clear. You know, they try to twist it and say, to say that the sons of God doesn't mean the angels. Well, everywhere in the Bible, whenever they say that, it, it means the angels. So <laughs> stop it. Stop the madness. You know, stop the cover up. It is what it is. And I should also tell you who's running the show on the planet today. The fact that they could cover these things up, that shows a lot of power. They could cover it up for 2,000 years and uh, keep you kind of in the dark. Because who's running the world system? Guaranteed it's not human beings. <laughs> I know. It sounds crazy, right? But it only sounds crazy if, you, if, if you're just not, if you're looking at things for, for what they are. I mean, it's, it's intuitively obvious that the things we are doing are leading to our demise. I mean, it is obvious. Unless you got your head in the sand, we are hurtling towards nuclear World War III. We're destroying the environment. We're killing the trees. We're killing the, the fish. We're, do, we're poisoning the water. We're doing all sorts of craziness to, as, to essentially ensure our demise. 
And it doesn't stop there. There's more I could talk about, but I'm not not in this venue. But I used to say stuff like, you know, we couldn't be unaliving ourselves faster, you know, if we had a plan to do it, it couldn't have worked this good. This is it. So you start wondering, is, uh, are we accidentally doing all this stuff? Is it just, you know, this, we are arbitrarily self-destructive? Or is, that, is there an actual agenda, an actual plan for the destruction of the human race? I mean, like I say, if you had written a script and planned it out, you couldn't have done better than what we're doing right now. There is a script. There is a plan. And if you don't recognize it, uh, you know, maybe you don't recognize it because you don't want to recognize it because you're figuring, you know, something like this. Well, I'm 60 years old. uh, I just got to make it another couple more decades, you know, and then it'll be up to those the kids, the, the generation... X's and the millennials and you know, they got to deal with it. That's a pretty selfish way of looking at it. They're going to inherit all this crap. So I don't know if you recognize, but everything seems to have speeded up. You follow? It's like, a, it's like the plan had to be accelerated because of something. Something caused the powers that be to say we have to accelerate our plan. But anyways... Uh, I digress. This initial physical seed would be destroyed after the flood, but their essence would live on through the DNA they left behind and their disembodied spirits, the invisible. So the serpent seed comes in two forms. Although the flood wiped out all the physical Nephilim, that was the purpose. Remember, man is Yah's creation. It's the creation of the Alayim. They're not trying to destroy their creation. They have a plan. What they had to do was neutralize the uh, invasive species. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like when you introduce one of those crazy eel-looking fish in, into uh, into a, 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 I don't know, a lake. Like in other words, if you took piranha and you dumped them in, in a lake full of uh, I don't know, perch. Well, that invasive species, the piranha, who are not supposed to be there, what are they going to do? They're going to wipe out the perch, right? So you can't have that. And so the Most High had to get rid of the invasive species, which were Nephilim. But Nephilim, their spirits had nowhere to go. They can only now wander the earth, and we now call them demons, right? But remember because they were part of human, they also left a DNA trail. And the reason the Most High chose Noah, it said because he was perfect in his generations. What's the root word of generations? It's genes, generations. He was untainted by the Nephilim bloodline. And that's the important thing. Now, he had a wife, and they had children, and his uh, sons, they married women that, you know, anybody else on that ark not named Noah could have retained the Nephilim bloodline. And what happens, especially that early in the game, all that has to happen is it pops out once, then it gains a foothold. And, through in, and then if that group starts intermarrying amongst, amongst themselves, it becomes the pervasive um, uh, you know, attribute. So in this case, size, right? So anyways, uh, you're dealing with two things. You're dealing with the physical and the spiritual versions of the serpent, serpent seed. They mirror each other. And make no mistake, they are evil. The things they are doing, they do the things of their father. They pollute the ocean. They pollute the air. They're greedy. They'll throw the rest of humanity under the bus for a dollar. They created this system. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Do you follow my point? Please, this this is your survival at stake. 
just like in the days of Noah, the Messiah told you, there's, a, there's this other species that the Most High, he promises, I'm not going to drown them this time. This time, I'm sending fire. So remember, the rainbow's in the sky as a, as a covenant saying, okay, I won't flood you out again. But he specifically tells you the next flood will be by fire. So you won't have to worry about water. You'll be dealing with fire. And you can only use your imagination as to how that might come about. Right? So I'm not going to belabor that point. We'll continue to giddy up. But understand, this is a real thing. And we need to know what's going on. Because you're, you, you want to know what the term salvation means? It means to be saved. Saved from what? The destruction to come. And it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Thank you, fam. Uh, that's pretty much all we got for today. Um, I love you all so much and thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. And share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they'd find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. And I thank you all for bringing certain uh, stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all. And shout out to the channel members. And may everybody... Have a beautiful and blessed day as in the body of Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. And I'll see you all on the next video. In the meantime, Shalom.